For over 40 years, Rabbi Noah Weinberg has been helping Jews of all backgrounds discover the wisdom and beauty of their heritage. Rabbi Noah was born and raised in New York City. He studied at Johns Hopkins and Loyola Universities and received his rabbinical ordination at the Nereus Royal Rabbinical College in Baltimore. Today, he resides with his Rebbitzin in the heart of Jerusalem. With his trademark warmth, wisdom, and love for all people, Rabbi Noah has become everyone's rabbi, touching the hearts of Jews from all walks of life across the globe. I can tell if someone is a great person based on the size of their fingernails. They make a mark on you. She's happy. They give you a good vibe by the way they carry themselves. If other people say so. You know what a great person embodies, and you can see these characteristics and these traits in other people. Honesty, patience, this giving, uh, humility, those, those are some of the things I think that are the benchmark for a great person. If they overcome things in their lives which have been hard, and they've overcome it in a way that shows a certain grace and that they're still happy when it's all said and done. Well, one way you can tell whether a guy is a great person is how small is he. <laughs> you know, great people are not petty. Great people don't need your recognition. Great people are self-contained. They're they are they have that pleasure of of knowing that they've accomplished something in life. That they that they they're thinking in big terms. That they they're human beings. They're 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 not they're not little donkeys. You know. <laughs> So, one way you know a great person is that he is not petty. We, we see a lot of great people around us. I go on a bus and I'm from New York and I'm, I'm really not used to see every time I get on a bus, if it's a full bus, not only one but three kids would stand up and give me a seat. It's, it's a wonderful feeling. These, these are good kids. They're great kids. When you go to for answers, you have questions, go to with problems, that's a great person. The same way you know a great person is, he's not trying to impress you. It's, it's, greatness is self-contained. You don't need to, uh, to, to get accolades. Anybody who, who needs uh, honors from you and who needs your approval, and <laughs> it means that he's not, he's, he's, not very, he's not very assured of himself and he's not, he doesn't know that he's got something. You, you see it in their eyes, it just, it comes off them. If you leave this person smiling every time you talk to them, that's a good sign, always. Right? A great person is readily available to you whenever you need them, and sometimes they even know beforehand somehow. If that person was just sitting down somewhere, and you walked past, and you didn't notice that person, that person called your name to say hello, that person is a great person. A great person doesn't need to, to get on it. He doesn't need to impress you with his greatness. He, he knows what he's done and he's so assured of himself he can share his time with you. He can be concerned for you. The third thing is that a great person has got to be someone who appreciates that human beings are great. He has to respect his fellow man. He has to look at every human being as a potential great contribution to mankind and treat them as such. Respect your fellow human being, or you're not great at all, you're petty. You have to watch every Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro film. After that, you have to listen to every Bob Dylan album and appreciate the genius, even the ones which are not critically acclaimed. I think after that, you're definitely on your way to greatness. Becoming great is by constantly trying to achieve your potential and overcoming any tests, trials, or tribulations that you have in life. You have to understand other people in order to be great. Like, you can't just assume things and you can't judge people. I think small things, by appreciating people, by appreciating nature. My father is great because he gets along great with people. He's just, um, that's why he's also a very happy person. So there's a definition of greatness is someone who makes everybody else around him better. But I have no idea, like, how someone becomes like that. 
That's just it's a mystery. I don't know. See, one of the things that bothers every human being, and I don't care how many people out there are watching, you know, but every one of us is working, is bothered by the fact we're not using our potential. We're not using our potential. Scientists say that we're using 2% of our potential. If you use 3%, you're in the genius category. 97% <laughs> wasted. That's an awful lot of greatness wasted. And we know this, and it bothers us. We want to... We want to, we want to, we want to be clicking on all cylinders. You ever hear that expression? You know. And there's times we have that feeling that everything is going well. You're connected. You're answering right. You're thinking right. You're, you're, you're just uh, flowing, yeah? and it's a wonderful experience. It's usually an illusion. <laughs> At least you're getting another half percent of your potential. Now, how in the world do you use your potential? So, one thing, my friend is you got to know what your potential is. We have 48 ways to wisdom. That's in our tradition. That's in our uh, uh, heritage. It's yours, it's yours, it's your heritage. It comes from 3,500 years of Jewish wisdom. Look it up. Each one of them is good for another 2% of your potential. When the world at large discovers even a fraction of one of these, they make it a whole way of life. Did you ever hear of transcendental meditation? And transcendental meditation is one of the 48 ways which is called purity. Make goals and just go for them. If you want to be like someone that everyone knows this is great, you could do stuff like acting. Yeah, whatever. Becoming but president. If you want to be your own great person that you just, you know you're great yourself, then do that too. And I think you should have a role model. Try to follow them. You, you have to work at it. It doesn't just come to you. You have to study, you have to train your mind to see the things that are right. Just doing everything to the best of his ability. The particular way of using your potential in the most positive and understanding way is have a goal, even an illusionary goal. I once had a student who wanted to win a gold medal in the Olympics. And he went through the 48 ways. And he told me, he used to practice three hours a day. I mean, you know, it was long distance speed, and long distance uh, of, of bicycle riding. That was his field, yeah? And he used to practice three hours a day. He would go from B'nai Brak up to Jerusalem and back in the three hours. You know, it was, it was, he was a professional. He was from the top. He was the top. After he listened to the 48 ways, he told me, Rabbi, you know, I was using this before I ever heard of it. When the coach would say, when I was walking down the street, I would be thinking, how would I take this corner on the bike? Or what would I do in this wind? And Shmir uh, and I define your terms. I would ask the coach, look, you lean, lean too far. What do you mean? My nose, my back, my shoulders. You gotta explain it to me. And saying it out loud, I would repeat these instructions to myself again and again. He went through all 48 ways because he wanted to win that gold medal and we have wisdom in our soul and he was using it to win gold. You can use it to win anything, but you gotta really want something. You want a, a goal. You gotta be driven. You can even be driven to make money. It's not worth it. You can be driven to help humanity. You know humanity needs help. Mm. It's worth it. You can get big numbers that way. A righteous person is somebody who cares um, about others. Where someone who is evil does bad and evil to others. The righteous person is happy with what he has. And a bad person, he's a selfish person. I don't know, everybody has the potential to be either righteous or evil. It's just, you know, every day you have to make decisions. And Sometimes you make the right ones and you end up being someone who's, you know, a great person and sometimes you make the wrong ones and you, you know, go down that path. <laughs> I don't think there's really that many uh, truly evil people in the world. So that's a good question. You see, there's nobody in this world, I mean, there's some maniacs, but there's some weirdos, but everybody wants to be good. Everybody wants to be good. You ever see a fella, he kicks his own mother in the stomach. I mean, that's... 
Nasty. Yeah, you're lower than a snake's belly. Ah, how can you do something like that? Disgusting. So do you know all the facts? How can you condemn me if you don't even know all the facts? He's got a point. You say, okay, snake's belly, tell me the facts. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hold on to my persecution, my prosecution. Yeah, and he says, well, I was reading this novel. I was lost in this novel. And my mother says to me, take out the garbage. I mean, you realize, if I take out the garbage, she's going to ask me to do the dishes. And who knows where it's going to go? I'm going to be persecuted the rest of my life. I have to make a stand for freedom. Yeah. The snake's belly, yeah? The good man, he takes out the garbage, right? Of course he takes out the garbage. His mother asks, takes out the garbage. So you say, hmm, wow, what a good man. I saw you were lost in that novel, and you were really in another world, and your mother asked you to take out the garbage. She had to ask three times, but finally you heard her, and you stood up, and you took out the garbage. I got to say, I'm very impressed. She says, you didn't notice when I was taking out the garbage, I kicked my own mother in the stomach. So what are you talking about? You never, I, well, I was watching you. What are you talking about? He says, why was I grumbling? I wanted her to suffer. So she wouldn't ask me to do the dishes. And who knows what else, yeah? <laughs> I wanted her to feel bad about interrupting me, yeah? That's terrible. Now, how really should you take out the garbage? Say, Mom, <laughs> thank you so much for asking me. What an opportunity. I can take out the garbage. My pleasure. Uh, when I come back, maybe I, I'll do the dishes and you have some errands, something that you got to get done, yeah? Oh, it's so hard to be good. If you have a definition, then you can struggle. If you don't have a definition, we just paint ourselves good, you know? <laughs> we just paint ourselves good. The fundamental difference between a righteous person and someone who's evil is the choice between either using your free will correctly or misusing it. If you believe in God and you believe in like absolute morality, then it's a pretty clear-cut thing. If you don't, then there's no way to judge things besides like your society's pressure. Um, I don't know. I guess their perspective on life, the way they treat other people, the way they look at things. Everybody knows that you you are brainwashed by your society. If we were born. In India, holy cows. And if we were born in Iran, Khomeini fans. And if we were born in Italy, rosary beads. And if we were born in Gaza, kill the Jews. <laughs> we all know that. So we're born wherever we are. So we say abortion is fine. Uh, there's a Haredim. That's not good. You know, you should find out. You should clarify, how do you know you're right? Because the first thing comes from knowledge. Once we know what's right, we know what's good, then we can use our will to be good, to overcome our desire to do what we feel like doing and to rationalize that we are the truly good men. Only we are the good men, wherever we're born. <laughs>
to be well to himself, to take care of himself, to treat himself properly, and to allow other people to feed off of that. Most things in the world are given to a man. A man can't decide what his life is going to end up being. So the most meaningful thing is that when he, whatever is given to him, he uses it in a meaningful way. Like save somebody's life, maybe? To help other people attain the highest degree of happiness in their lifetime. The first thing that a person has to know is, what are you living for? Bottom line. What do you want? You know, everybody knows, uh, uh, I'd like to be rich, I'd like to be famous, I'd like to follow the millionaire, follow the millionaire, whatever, whatever. Good, but why? Why do you want money? So that I don't have to work anymore. Well, what do you want on your tombstone? What do you want people to say after you died? He made a lot of money, he drove a Porsche, he was, a, he was able to drink anybody else under the table. <laughs> you, know? you want to say, I made a contribution to mankind. It was a man who was honest, a man who kept the faith, a man who struggled against the odds, but for the good. He was a man who was thoughtful. He was a man who was wise. The first thing that you got to do is understand what life is about in order to find something meaningful. There's a lot of people who gave their lives to fix the world, which is definitely a meaningful thing, and they destroyed the world, you know, like Lenin, Marx. It took a heck of a long time before the world recognized that communism is a, it doesn't work. It just, it's a, it brought misery to millions, misery to millions. Lenin thought he was an idealist, but he didn't understand himself, and he didn't understand man. And what he did was destroy millions of lives. So, action is important. Putting your thoughts into action and trying to change the world, we know is meaningful. But without first understanding what life is about and checking it out, and comparing it to what other people say and putting it on the marketplace and fighting it through the marketplace and knowing like five finger clarity what you're talking about, watch out for the action. Understand yourself. That's meaningful. The secret of good decision making is checking out all your, all your options and seeking advice. I think the secret of good decision making is actually to go with intuition. Whatever, whatever comes to you first. Trust your instincts. Like I'm not a good decision maker because I don't know exactly what I want. Uh, the secret of good decision making is to, to look at a situation very carefully and to uh, weigh everything out together from an absolute perspective instead of what you want the situation to be. If you take if you take things patiently, you'll never make a bad decision. At the moment you're making the decision, it's not possible to know. Only the future will tell. I would ask somebody who I highly respect um, before making a major decision, any major decision in my life. Like you always could tell somebody else better a decision to make than you tell yourself. Come up with a philosophy and uh, continue to work that philosophy and add to it and let, let it grow. First thing you've got to do is know when you're making decisions. We make decisions wholesale every moment of the day. Whether you're going to read the paper for another page for another five minutes and then go back to work, or whether you're going to have another cup of coffee or a bagel, uh, whether you're going to... We make decisions all the time. And how do we make decisions? Hmm, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I, I don't see anything interesting here, but... Uh, who knows, maybe the next page they'll have something important on the... I don't know, so I'll try. We make decisions helter-skelter. How should you make a decision? What can I do with my time? I can spend the time scanning the newspapers. You know, you've got to know what's going on, but to see whether I'm really interested, whether it'll make a difference to me. If I read it, I, I, I have a judgment. And if I know that it's nonsense, it's not going to make any difference to me, then just forget about it. So what should you do with your time? Well, you're going to have alternatives. You have to have a sense of what time should be spent. Time is life. What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? Start doing it with your time. So even if you have five minutes, you have a little book, you're going to put down what you want to accomplish, yeah? So that you know 
Uh, you get the information to accomplish it. The idea is life is decisions, constant decisions. You have to make the right decisions in the right way. What's the right way? Get information. See the alternatives. The decision is pretty obvious, which is the best of all the alternatives. In a piece is when you've had, you've had about, you've had four triple shots of Jack Daniels and it's just a great night and you're raving, you're up there, everything's going good, that's in a piece. It's a good question. What's the secret of inner peace? Uh, I haven't figured that one out yet. Gotta be honest. I don't know. And if you know, you should tell me. And I'll tell other people, because I, I have no clue. Shalom Aleichem. You know, the Jewish people, we have this greeting. Shalom. You say good morning, shalom. Good night, shalom. Goodbye, shalom. Hello, shalom. <laughs> Make up your mind. You want me to come or go? <laughs> you know, what's this shalom? You think that we're pacifists? They call us militaristic, you know, <laughs> this little state of Israel. Militaristic, yeah? <laughs> of course we want to survive. What, what is this shalom? You know, when, I have no shalom aleichem. You ever hear that one? In the Kaddish, which is the mourner's prayer, the last blessing we say is sim. Uh, 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 in the prayers that we three times a day, the Jewish prayers, the last blessing we say shalom. What's this shalom? What are we talking about? We're not talking about shalom of war and peace. You know, with the Jewish people, we fought four world powers of their day. We fought the Persians. We won. Uh, help from the Almighty. We fought the uh, Babylonians. We lost. We fought the Greeks. We won. You know, Hanukkah. <laughs> we won. Again, a little help from the Almighty. We got a little nation. And they were a world power. Nobody fought them. We fought the Romans. Nobody fought the Romans in their heyday. We lost. But they took them quite a while to uh, subdue. The first Roman legion that fled was from the Jews in Palestine. That's the first Roman religion that was decimated. They're from peons, from <laughs> farmers. So we're not pacifists. So what's this shalom? We're talking about inner peace. Inner peace. The secret of acquiring inner peace is having outer peace. To be truly happy and to have true inner peace is when you have no doubts in your mind about what you're doing in this world and what, you, what everything is about in this world. The understanding of oneself. Inner peace. Ice cream. I don't know, like, just like being content with what you have and uh, accomplishing things in your life. And like, uh, I don't know, maybe doing like meditation or something like that or stuff that chills you out, man. I don't know. Inner peace. You say that every human being is a raging volcano, fighting himself back and forth, fighting himself back and forth. You don't feel it? You don't feel it? Well, do you ever go jogging? <laughs> do you ever go jogging? I guarantee you, if you've never gone jogging, the first time you go out there, you're going to hear somebody yelling at you, you idiot, this is going to kill you, you're going to have a heart attack, your feet are going to fall off. Don't you understand, this is murder, this is sadistic, yeah? And you're going to say, hey, shut up, everybody says it's good for me. <laughs> Who's yelling at who? You're yelling at yourself? Yeah. So you've got to understand, we got a body and a soul. And this is in constant, in constant battle. And I say, would you like to be happy? Which would you rather be, happy or rich? The body says, go ahead, answer. Happiness, of course. So I teach you how to be happy. So you think you're going to do it? The body says, okay, now you know how to be happy, shut up. <laughs> Let's just rest. You haven't seen somebody who's depressed? You say, you know, uh, it's a beautiful day. I have a fishing boat, uh, I have a, a tackle and, and worms, everything is ready, come on out, you, you, you love this, come. Oh, now, come back tomorrow, <laughs> body wants comfort, the soul wants greatness. And this is a constant battle, it's, it's always going on. And you don't know about it, but it's there. And when does it come out when you want to do something that you know the soul says, you ever have this moment, I'm asking you, this is not for television, but 
I'm asking you, did you ever have a moment when you said to yourself, who needs this hassle? It's such a hassle to live. Maybe I'll make an end of it all. Ooh, and then you say, shut up. Where did that idea come from? The soul said, hey, buddy, you cut that out, you know. <laughs> That's really fighting already, yeah? Huh? So, in Judaism we say, the body will make peace with the soul. If you jog every day for three months, guaranteed, in the end, the body says, hey, we didn't jog today, come on, we need this. Uh, you know, and the body is into it. The soul will never make peace with the body. You give up on jogging, the soul says, shlom. Damn, damn it, another, another failure. You give up on learning a language, another failure. You give up on, the soul says, come on, let's go, let's change the world, let's move. And the body says, come on, relax, cut it out. Yeah. The soul says, let's master life. The body says, tomorrow, please don't persecute me. <laughs> I'm comfortable, complacent. I'm nearly asleep. You want me to wake up? <laughs> the only way you're going to have peace is if you wake up long enough that the body really enjoys it. It can partake in the soul's pleasure. Knowing through the past and present what gives you that sensation of peace in mind and having a focus to achieve peace in mind and combining those together. If you can sleep while your neighbor is chopping away the wood, um, or speed sawing away the trees, then you, you can live in peace. If you have any questions or any comments, anything at all, we're interested. Please do.